كل المؤمنين يغض من أبصارهم ويحفظ فروجهم ذلك أزكى لهم إن الله خبير بما يصنعون Say to the believing men to lower their gazes and to preserve their private parts from indecency meaning to remain chaste and that is purer for them for indeed Allah knows that which they do There is none who has more jealousy than Allah when his, when his male servant or his female servant commit fornication. O oh, Ummah of Muhammad, he said, if you knew that which I know, then you would laugh little and you would weep much. And in a narration he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and there is none who loves to pardon the repentant one more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honorably and jealous. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is jealous with regard to his male and female servants that they should fornicate. That they should indulge in such an indecent and despicable act. Or that they should engage in means that lead to that. How despicable that is my brothers and sisters. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you halal wives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you halal that which is tayyib, that which is good, that which is pure. And then you seek after that which is haram and that which is despicable and that which is despised and ugly. That no man would tolerate for his daughter, for his granddaughter, for his sister. No man would tolerate that. Yet you find amongst those Muslims, individuals who will engage in that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated that there are three who will come Yawm Al Qiyamah. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not look at them. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not talk to them. And for them, there is a severe punishment. The first of those he mentioned, Shaykh Zani. The old man who commits fornication. Again, reiterating the fact how severe this crime is and how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi continually opened up the avenues and encouraged the youth to marry. The most severest of those to be punished Yawm al Qiyamah is an old man who commits fornication because by old age wisdom should have come to him as an old man and he engages in this type of despicable abomination. When Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi has commanded them as young men to marry. So there's no need for you to engage in such affairs. So we say my brothers and sisters. Just as Allah or Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That he is jealous with regard to his male and female servants that they should commit fornication. Naam. So the fornicator angers Allah. And he is close to having a wicked retribution cast down upon him from Allah. Allah may destroy him. Allah may open up affairs to him that will bring him fitna and trial and tribulation in his life because of this heinous, heinous crime that he has committed in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely it is an indecency. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاهِشَةً وَسَاءَ sabila." Surely it is an indecency. And it is an evil way. So it is an evil way that leads to destruction. Due to what it entails in terms of corrupting communities. The spread of terrible sexually transmitted diseases. Diseases that are widespread in our times. Look at the various diseases that spread amongst humanity from the most severe of them, AIDS. This disease that is spread due to the promiscuity of society, due to homosexuality, due to promiscuous heterosexuals, due to this evil affair 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them an avenue. But they reject that and they leave that. And they enter into that which is haram and forbidden. So fornication, it leads to the mixing up of lineage. The loss of honor. The loss of self-respect. The breeding of contempt. And enmity between mankind and between the people. So fornication is a pathway to destructive, to destructive characteristics. And to every downfall. It is for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise, he forbade all of the means that lead to fornication. He forbade the men from looking at women. And he forbade the men from looking at men. So the gazes are to be lowered. That a man should be pious and righteous and obedient to Allah and fearful of Allah. He should treat others as he would like to be treated. He, would treat, he should treat the women from other families just like he would like the women folk from his family to be treated. He should not look at them just like he would not want anyone to look at his wife or his children, his daughters. Honor my brothers and sisters, the erd of a human being, the honor that he possesses, this should not be violated and nor should he violate the honor of others. Treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. So the gaze of the man upon the woman, this gazing and the first glance that a man takes to a woman, that this is the poisoned arrow of Iblis that causes the man to return back to his gaze and he continues to look. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَذُوا فَرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَسْنَعُونَ Say to the believing men to lower their gazes and to preserve their private parts from indecency, meaning to remain chaste. ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَكُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ And that is purer for them. For indeed Allah knows that which they do. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَذْنَ فَرُوجَهُنَّ And tell the believing women to lower their gazes and to protect their private parts from illicit relationships. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has commanded the believing men and the believing women how they are to behave, to lower your gazes, to be chaste, not to look at things that Allah has forbidden for you to look at. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not follow a glance at a woman with another glance because the first look was yours, but the second was not. The hadith report by Abu Dawud and At-Tirmidhi. Shaykh Al-Fawzan, he said, meaning that there is no sin upon you for glancing at a woman the first time because you did not intend to look at her. But if you continue looking or you look at her a second time, then you are sinful. Because then it was intentional and it was deliberate. And that is the beginnings of the path to fornication. It is not permitted, my brothers and sisters, to look at women out of desire or seeking to desire. Nor to look at pictures and images and photographs of women that are now commonplace on the TV or the internet or magazines or in newspapers. All of these are affairs that incite fornication in people. And he beautifies the affair of fornication. So it is obligatory lower, to lower one's gaze. Not to look at those images. Especially upon the internet. Because it will lead to greater and greater evils in society. And we see today the fruits of what they call the sexual revolution. And the fruits of what they call liberal feminism. Wherein what is intended is to liberate the youth as they claim and especially young women, from modesty and self-respect and being honorable. And thus, they have flung open the doors of immorality that has led to an unprecedented level of sexual exploitation of women, and especially young women and girls. Society has not benefited from the so-called liberation, from the so-called sexual revolution, how has society benefited, my brothers and sisters?